All right, this is uh, how to use options to generate income, and this is going to be more along the lines of defined risk strategies. Yes, I do sell naked options on occasion, usually around earnings and stuff like that sometimes, but uh, for the most part, uh, this is going to be, it's kind of geared towards the beginning trader, so to speak, but uh, just because I want to be, make sure everybody's on the same page, so uh, we figured that the defined risk strategy was probably appropriate for most other, most people out there anyway. And please keep in mind this is going to be recorded so that you can have it sent to you via email afterwards. And I do suggest that everybody go and watch it again. It's kind of like uh, in school when you would go to class, write out all your notes. If you went back and reread all your notes, you can fill in the blanks and, and catch some things that you missed. And it makes it really sink in a lot better. So I would suggest. Um, despite the fact that it is going to be about an hour long to go back and read all of those things. So, uh, so, so I would suggest doing that if you have the opportunity. Anyway, uh, my name is Eric Wilkinson. Uh, many of you may recognize me from CNBC, Fox Business, or the Wall Street Journal, where I've commented on everything from geopolitical to uh, economic and market analysis. I've been trading my own money for well over 25 years now. I'm not here to tell you that I'm going to make you rich or that I'm going to make you a millionaire, but I am going to teach you how to take control of your finances, manage your portfolio, and most importantly, manage your own risk. If you guys can take some of the riskier uh, aspects of a portfolio into your own control, you guys will save a lot of money on fees and everything else. Leave the uh, bonds and uh, money markets to the financial advisor as far as I'm concerned. That's really where you're going to see your value from those guys. If you can. Uh, pay yourself, then you're going to be doing a lot better. Like, like I've said, I've traded in most markets throughout my career from the Chicago Board of Trade. I've traded stocks, commodities, financial futures, uh, currencies, and options on all of those products. And as you can see, in just about every circumstance or market condition. Uh, so I do have a little bit of housekeeping to go over. Uh, this is the disclaimer that you guys have probably seen before. At the end of the day, anything that we talk about in these webinars, daily market commentaries, is not a solicitation for you to buy or sell any of the securities that we're talking about. Uh, and a, a little bit of information also, you know, uh, I do have some trades on that we may be talking about, but I'm not trying to get you guys to buy what I'm doing. The fact of the matter is I don't know what's in your portfolio, I don't know your risk parameters, and uh, I, I couldn't possibly say that something that I'm talking about is appropriate for you and or your pro portfolio. As a matter of fact, some of the things could be counterintuitive to what you're already doing. So just take what we're teaching you in this webinar and play around with it, implement those strategies into your portfolio in your own way. And like I said, this is going to be income generation with options, and we're going to be using put options. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about the put spread and a bull put spread. Now, I'm kind of assuming everybody knows what a call and what a put is. You know, a put generally when you're buying it, you want the market to go down. Well, when we're trying to generate some income, you know, we're going to sell these spreads and collect a premium. As far as I'm concerned, if you're out there buying uh, some uh, puts or calls, really fighting an uphill battle. It's a Sisyphean effort to keep up with this decaying uh, uh, asset. So the fact of the matter is, is you'll be a lot more profitable. And uh, the person that said that they traded options before, maybe you were on the buy side of it because you didn't want to take that risk. Well, at the end of the day, there's just no money to be made in buying options for the most part in any condition. Uh, there's there's very few occasions, maybe, and and we've talked about them on calendar spreads. That's when you're usually buying them. But for the most part, selling spreads is all I do. Selling uh, options is the main focus I have for trading options. And with this, you're always going to receive a premium. And we're going to try and take advantage of time decay, which is theta, and volatility 
contraction. So we want both of those to get sucked out of these options premiums. And that's the way that we're going to generate the income. Uh, this is going to be a directional type strategy where we want the market to either rally, the underlying to either rally, or to stay relatively neutral. We don't want it to breach our prices. So uh, we are looking for it to trade sideways to higher because we're going to be selling a put. And the essentials to success is picking the right strike. Now, this is going to be key, and we're going to talk about it in a little bit more detail, but the fact that I look at is on delta. You look at the delta with like a 35 delta and that is going to give you approximately a, a one standard deviation move out which is a, a rare occurrence or a 65 percent probability of success. So that's what we're going to be looking about and when we go into the live trading you'll see that a little bit more detail. And picking the right duration. Now what does that mean? Uh, the, the duration is the time. So we're going to try and take advantage of this basically from 45 days to about 21 days is usually where I, I put the trades on about 45 days try and cover them around 20 days. Yeah, it does steepen and you get a lot more uh, theta decay back here but there's also gamma risk and delta risk that happens the closer you come to expiration. So I'd like to try and cut that part out of it. It, it, it looks pretty clean here, but in practice, uh, everything gets a little bit crazy going down through here. So I, I like to take 45 to 20 some odd days, and then that puts you back into the next month's cycle. So you're going back out to the 45 days. And, um, and we'll talk about how much we're going to try and collect and at what point we're going to cover these trades a little bit later as well. And picking the right environment. What is the right environment? Well, I look at it where there's high vega. What's high vega? I'm looking for on uh, a, a ranking, it's a implied volatility percentile above 50. That's when I'm going to be looking to put these strategies on. If it's down around 25, 30, I'm not going to do it because the if volatility starts expanding, it's going to uh, start causing me to not make as much profit as I would like to see. So it's also going to counteract what's happening with that theta decay. So as theta is decaying and volatility is expanding, we not, it, they might actually offset each other. But if you can get in an environment where there's high vega or high volatility and right at that 45 days, then that is going to be the optimal time to start putting on these strategies. And we're kind of right there. We're right in at the 42 days. So we're a couple of days off, but that doesn't really matter. You can do it anywhere between 45 and 35 days is the way I kind of look at it. And we're going to pick the right underlying. What's the right underlying? Well, there's there's got to be a lot of volume in that underlying. If you're trading something that nobody's ever heard of, it's a stock you your buddy told you about and there's just not very much volume in there, you might have like a, a dollar wide bid ask spread and you're going to have to give up so much edge to get into that trade that it's going to offset a lot of your profits. Whereas you get into something that has a lot of volume, there's going to be a really tight bid ask spread and when the going gets rough, if the market starts really moving, you're always going to have an opportunity to get out of that. If you were getting into one with a dollar wide bid ask, if it gets a little bit uh, more uh, volatile in the markets, those bid ask spreads are going to be a lot wider. So it's going to be much more difficult to get in and out of those. And Tommy, uh, we are going to look at the option chain uh, in just a moment, but I'm just getting through some of these little basics before we go on. And know your exit strategy before entering the trade. This is key. And that's key with the defined risk strategy is at the end of the day if you like to take on more risk you can expand the uh, the leg that defines your risk which is the strike that you're buying. We're going to sell the strike uh, to collect the premium and then we're going to buy a further out of the money strike that will define our risk. And the other part of knowing your exit strategy is knowing how much heat you're going to take. Sometimes uh, 
I look at it like two or three times. If I'm losing two or three times of what my max profit was, then I'll look to get out of that. Also, if it's kind of breaching a, a key support or resistance level that I'm looking at. Now, your max profit on any strategy where you're collecting a premium is the premium that you collected, which is the short put credit you're getting minus the long put debit that you're paying for and that difference so if it, I collected two dollars for the put and then I paid a dollar for the long put my max profit is a dollar so your max loss occurs when the uh, underlying is going to be trading below your long put exp at expiration so uh, if, if you have if you're short a uh, 45 put and you're long a 40 put then that five dollar difference minus the credit received you know it's you I'm going to be looking to collect a third of the width of the price on a five dollar spread or a right around a, a you know between 30 and 25 percent uh, of it then you know you're going to be looking at three dollars and 75 cent loss on that for a max max loss and your break even is going to be your short put strike price minus the net credit received. So, for instance, if we're short the 45 put and we collected a dollar 25, when the underlying is trading 43.75, that is going to be basically your break even. And again, we will go over all of those right now. So uh, SPY, we got. I just added up here it's uh, coming up against this Fibonacci level so I was kind of watching that volatility is really low this is where I I always have the implied volatility because the quick and easy way to figure out the implied volatility rank which is uh, something like this uh, you can see I have a uh, calendar spread on or a, sorry a, a poor man's covered call from one of our other webinars in Disney this is the IV percentile but the way to figure out the, and we want that to be above 50. It's really close, so Disney would be a candidate when I was running through a bunch of stocks. That was one that kind of popped up for me. So, you know, it's 2% below it, but it's really not too bad when you, if you take out something like uh, the high and the low. So let's go to Disney just so I have it on here. So as you can see, the Disney had this huge spike in here. And now what IV percentile is, is for the uh, for the numerator, you take the high and subtract it from where it's trading right now. So if the high is right around 35, and where we're trading right now is 24. Take that and put it on the numerator, and then on the denominator, you put the uh, high, subtract that from the very low. And then you divide those by each other. So, for instance, ballpark on here, on the top, we would have the high from, say, 34, just for math. 24 is where it's trading right now. So, on the numerator, you would put 10. And on the denominator, you would put 20-ish. So, you divide those by each other, you get about a 50%. So, that's the quick and dirty right there for that. Um, yeah, Carlos, I have checked Apple, and I, I, it is on my docket to go over. Uh, I do have a position in that just for uh, uh, clarity on that. Um, so Disney, Disney could fit the bill. It's had a major sell-off here, and um, you know sometimes I look at the Fibonacci's and stuff like that. I look at charts a lot, you guys, and the reason why I do is because I think it's the overall psychology of the market. And when you have the overall psychology of the market. Uh, that you know it just tells you what everybody is thinking whether it's the tea leaves or whatever Betty calls it I think it's the psychology of the market so you can see the tide change or what the, the most people out there are feeling so I look at that and a lot of people look at Fibonacci so uh, you know sometimes when everybody's using the same things it, it has a tendency to make it come to fruition uh, so something like this you know, Disney has bounced off this 105 fib level, so we could look at doing uh, selling the uh, 105 puts and then buying the 100 puts. 
to define our risk, make sure that if it goes below that 50% Fibonacci level, then uh, you know it's kind of going to be trading at least $5 lower relatively soon, or at least testing that further. So I, I do look at these types of things because uh, they have a tendency to, to hold true just because so many different people are using those. And it gives you kind of the psychology of the market. So uh, another thing looking at these, see if, if you look at like a $100 stock and we've got six cents wide on the bid ask there, you know, and the closer you get to the strike, it's really tight. That is a liquid market, you know, six cents. Whereas you look at something like, um, I was looking at this stock, uh, what was it, PCTC, and it's, what? Right. Oh, sorry, dyslexia, sorry about that, PTCT. So this stock has, you know, 100% volatility. I mean, it's at its upper end of the range. That would be a good candidate. It did break below this. So I would probably hold out on that to watch it come down and try and test this fib level. So that looks like it would be a good candidate in the coming days. So I would go back to this and check out the options chain. And like I said, we're looking for the delta that's about 35-ish, you know, 30 is, is good also. <clears throat> so uh, that would be this 40 level right here in the puts. But look how wide these bid asks are. I mean, th th that is not a liquid market. And if the going gets tough and it gets a little bit crazier, it's it's going to get even wider. You know, IV percentile can trade at 100% for a very long time because if implied volatility keeps creeping up, that's still 100%, right? So that's where it gets a little uh, confusing. It can trade at 100% for a very long time because it can keep going up. And it can trade at zero for a very long time. Um, so I would kind of like take this off of the docket for the most part. Uh, a couple other, you know, I've gone through probably a hundred stocks trying to figure it out. Somebody did mention Apple. Everybody has, a, uh, I think TD Ameritrade says Apple is the largest holding uh, of the retail investors. So everybody's looking at Apple. Um, and it has a high IV. I think it's at least really close. Uh, let's see, so so you can see I already have on the put spread in here, um, and I don't remember what I, I, I did the 110, 105 put spread, I didn't write how much I, I received for it, but usually, so it's a $5 wide uh, put spread, I would look to at least collect around uh, between 83 cents and 63 cents, which is usually uh, between a third and a quarter. So if I could get somewhere in between there, that would be the best. And uh, so that would be something I would look at. Uh, let's see, obviously, because the other thing was is I put that on just a couple days ago when I kind of came down here and tested this area. So I did the 110 puts because it's just above this Fibonacci level, and I figured if it breached this Fibonacci level, it was really going to go down and test the $100 level. Um, I'm still kind of bullish on uh, Apple. You know, it, it's not going away anytime soon, and you know, it had good earnings, so that's why I ended up putting that on. Uh, so that would be something I would look at. You know, so uh, like I said, obviously, I, since I did so, uh, and that. I did when it was about a 30 delta. So, you know, since it's creeped down even further, you could even look at doing the 105, 100 level put spread and um, get it at a better better price than what I got. So, uh, let's see here. Let's, so, we know it's got a lot of volume in there. It's Apple, of course. So, you go to vertical spread and uh, a five dollar wide so we're looking to get at least a yeah that's a great price right there you could even go to this and still get you know it's this 180 is right around the 
is a little bit better than a third of the width, but you're really close to it. I would like to get this one for about uh, you know a dollar, dollar fifty or something like that. So a um, dollar, look between a dollar twenty-five ish, I guess. Delta denotes what about the stock? So um, the delta of a stock is how much this price is going to change for one dollar move in the underlying. So this option is going to change by 31 cents for every dollar move up here on the underlying. So when it goes from a dollar fifteen to a dollar sixteen, that's going to change this by 31 cents. And then gamma is the change of the delta. So you get so after it moves a dollar, then gamma is going to change the delta by three cents. That's a little bit more in depth, but that's that's what gamma is also. And then theta is your time decay, vega is your volatility. And you know, for every dollar change in the underlying, it's going to change by that many cents. So that's what those are telling you. Those numbers. Did that explain? But the quick and dirty way to figure out probability of success is to take the delta and subtract it from 100 and that gives you 69% uh, probability of success. The quick and easy way to figure out your probabilities of success on that. So that would be a good good one to look at. The other one, uh, let's see, everybody looks at is LinkedIn. LinkedIn has uh, been getting beat up a little bit late, lately. You know, it's pretty close to historical lows. Volatilities. Let's check out the volatility. I do, Tommy, I do consistently trade the 30-ish delta. I don't, unless I'm going naked, I, I'll go a little bit further out, uh, especially on, like, earnings. If I'm doing something naked, then I usually go twice the, uh, twice the move, the predicted move. Uh, but for the most part, I go with the 30-ish delta. 35 would be perfect. Uh, all right. Uh, sorry. I was just reading a comment. Uh, what do you need to digest, uh, Sidron? All right. So another one, Starbucks, everybody looks at. Starbucks is 47, just slightly below. Uh, I think it was a little bit higher yesterday when I was doing some of these too. So Starbucks is right below that 50% uh, level that I'd, I'd like to have as my line in the sand, but for the most part. So I would really put this on the top, top of my list just because it looks like it's, it's starting to... Uh, you know the bulls and the bears are meeting. So usually, when you see one of these dojos, it is uh, an indication of a reverse in trend. It's much better indication if it's at the very bottom of a trend. Uh, but you know, it's been trudging up nicely. So uh, that would be something I would look at maybe tomorrow or Monday if it starts, uh, you know, trading above the close. So uh, it's not not a perfect perfect one right now so you know I would keep looking you know but I, I would start out and say okay that's something to be at least working looking at I looked at Transocean Transocean is just really getting beat up but it looks like it's found its bottom still has high volatility rig has a uh, has a lot of options contracts trading on it so I got it on single so again I would look you can really get pretty far out with rig so I would play around with it I would look at these two strikes right here the 11 and the uh, tens and then kind of go back to the chart and see well you know the 11s are are a historical low so you know I would feel pretty confident with those 11s and get a little bit more bang for your buck on it because you're getting a, a higher delta uh, oh sorry I was looking at the bid ask so sorry about that um, so 34, 13, that's not very good. 13 wouldn't be below, so I would maybe scratch that one off. Sorry about that confusion. I'm look, I looked at the 
price there. So the 12s, you're only getting 20 delta. Uh, the description on the Greeks, I don't, I don't understand your question there. And what do I? So uh, let's see. All right. So Disney is also another one that's been getting beat up. And I have a, uh, like I said, I have a poor man's covered call that we did in one of the other webinars uh, for Disney. Of course, it was looking really good for a while, but now I, I've had to start defending that. So um, I, I had to move my calls down. I bought the 80 calls that are deep in the money for that, and that's what my position on it is in there. But Disney, you know, it's had a pretty big sell-off. It, if you look at the uh, Fib levels, uh, right about there, you can see that the 105s were defended. So if I was going to do a put spread in here, I'd probably look at the 105, 110 put spread. And again, I go through the steps and uh, so you can see I sold the 115 calls and I'm long the, the 80 calls down here. So it's 47, 105. So you're getting, you're only getting about a dollar for that. So that's, you know, only about 20% of the width of the strike. So that's probably not going to work out for us. Plus the delta is a little bit low for being that close to the uh, at the monies for the most part. So Disney, star it, but let's move on. See if there's anything else out there. DuPont, I was looking at. DuPont's really close to historical lows, so it's got high volatility. It's our, another thing you don't want to be doing is putting these on with the earnings coming up, like in front of earnings. Volatility is going to expand almost 100% of the time for the most part. So you don't want to do that going into these unless you are trying to, you know, trading for that binary event. So stay away from just putting these trades on into that. Wait till the, uh, the number comes out and wait a day because you'll still probably be able to get above the uh, 50 on there. Uh, yeah, I kind of gave a description of the Greeks. Uh, Citron's asking uh, about the Greeks. Uh, I always have the Greeks up, which is right here. You know, you can do it on the layout, delta, gamma, theta, vega. And delta basically is going to give you an indication as to how much the option price is going to change given one move in the underlying. Gamma is the, is the change of the delta after basically two dollar moves. So you know the first dollar move it's going to move 33 cents and then after that depending on if it goes up down it's going to either add four cents to that or subtract four cents from that. Does that make sense? I know it's a little confusing but uh, and then theta is the time k vega is the volatility which we're really looking at. All right, so um, sorry, so we're looking at double D. So and you can see Dupont has a lot of uh, trading going on in there. Um, I have on a uh, on a uh, straddle that I've had on for a few days. If you guys watch the daily market commentaries, I'm always talking about what I'm doing. So uh, full disclosure, it's there, and I have on a Dupont straddle. Uh, so I probably wouldn't mess with my position on this, but you know it's still uh, two dollars and fifty cents, so you're getting about seventy some odd cents. It's right in between that third and the uh, uh, the quarter, the width of the strike, so that would be a good one. It's also at a pretty good level, being down here, but I'd hold off and wait for this to look like it's turning around. So I would also put that on the docket. Um, Also look at uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Do you guys have any questions at this point besides the ones I've kind of uh, fielded so far? 
or have anything that you want me to look at. So Green Mountain Coffee Roasters is I did this on an earnings play. Um, so I'd wait for it to come up a little bit again. We're still in that 50% uh, volatility. Yeah, you guys, please watch this video again, and it, it will sink in. I, I will tell you that that's the best way to really do it, is to, to do it and let it sink in. And that's, that's really, this is a pretty good one. You know, you're getting, I wish it would be a little bit higher on those 50s, because then you could do the 50, 47, and really be kind of uh, out in the clear for the most part. Um, so that one's not the best. And here, you know what, I'll do, uh, put on this spread, show you the uh, risk parameter. So let's just say we did this one because that's best on the third, the width. And so the next thing you can do, if you don't want to figure out through the math, um, you can go to analyze trade and it'll tell you what your risk parameters are on this. I also like to go change this to the standard deviation, one standard deviation. It's not given. It's the thing with paper money. It doesn't work very well on this. Uh, so this is your risk parameter on it. You know, you're you're risking. You're you're getting a you know mid price. If you got ninety two cents, your your max profit is going to be ninety two dollars because everything's multiplied by a hundred when you're doing this. So it, uh, ninety-two dollars, and your two and a half dollar strike is going to give you your, uh, you know, your negative side. As uh, let's do the math real quick. So if I, you know, it's a little bit over. It's dollar fifty-eight is your uh, risk on the downside, which is a pretty good risk risk reward on that. It's a pretty good one. Uh, okay, so a couple of people are asking to look at some things. Let's look at uh, Cisco. So I'd go to the chart, look at Cisco. Yeah, that's when are Cisco's earnings? They got to be coming up. Let's see. So uh, let's look at this. This is market profile. This is something I like to look at to. Uh, figure things out also. So market profile, uh, uh, sorry, market profile tells where the most time and uh, volume is traded for this contract. So you can tell Cisco's right there in the sweet spot, you know, it's, it's going to want to stay or migrate towards this. It's, as soon as it gets up here, the long start covering. As soon as it gets down here, the short start covering. It starts always pushing back and forth to this. Uh, so that would be a really good uh, one to look at. So let's go to trade. Uh, Okay, so stone out. Hey, hey, Eric. I've heard that in the long run, it's better to sell options than actually buy options. That buying options is a loser's game. What's your opinion on that? I completely agree with that. Uh, the only time I buy options is if I'm doing the leaps and I'm doing like a poor man's covered call. So you know, I buy something with uh, the 500 plus days, or you know, two years or a year and a half out, and I'll buy deep in the money calls. And then I will sell short calls, you know, the monthly, and then I'll just work it all the way out, and it's a long-term trade. So it's a, you know, you got to stay with it for a long haul, like I did with Disney. I bought the 80 calls on these Januarys, and then I, I sold the closer ones, and I'm just going to try and collect premium as we go. I didn't foresee that big drop in Disney, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm losing less money on my Disney long position uh, as a synthetic 
long stock than I would if I would have just bought the Disney and it cost me a lot less in margin. So that's the only time I'll do it. But otherwise, I don't. I don't buy options. It doesn't matter. I mean, butterflies, straddles. It's it, like I said. It's a Sisyphean uh, trade. You're you're fighting an uphill battle. I'd much rather just roll it down that fader decay and uh, bigger contraction hill than try and roll up and, and fight against that. So it's a great one to do it. Uh, where do you position a trade on a specific fib level or pullback? I usually look at support resistance or fib levels and and try to play that. I also look at that market profile, uh, the Stottlemyre, uh, and if it's right in that sweet spot, you know, like you can tell Cisco's been wanting to trade right here for a while. The reason why I did, I pulled this up, see we got earnings coming out. So I would not put this trade on heading into the earnings trade unless I had a directional assumption and I was probably trading the weeklies, but we're not going to, that's a little bit more of an advanced trade. So uh, I'm going to stay away from Cisco right now. Uh, the next one was, I saw online was CBS. And put these into a lot of different, so CBS just came out with their earnings. It beat, and they're selling off. They come out with like a, uh, a bad phone call. They not talk very good about their stock in their phone conference call. So that would be something we could look at. And you know, I'm a contrarian, so I like it when you know something like this happens. They, you know, everything looks pretty good. The market reacts badly to it, sells off. Um, you know, this is going to be a support area, despite the fact that it did break below it. This is still going to act as a support area in here. Uh, so that's something I would look at. So this would be a good trade to look at. I didn't have this pop up on my radar. Uh, where do I position the trade on the specific? Oh, I already answered that. Sorry. So uh, moving on, let's go back to vertical or to go back to the single, so I can see where the it's easier to figure out what the deltas are. So 32 delta on the 47 and a half. So we're at a pretty low level. A 47 and a half is a pretty new low. So that would work. We've got above 52. This trade is looking really good right now. Um, so if we did it on the spread, um, we're not getting my third the width, it doesn't look like. 57. I would. I try and keep it at my minimum of, of like 63 cents is basically the quarter of the width of the strikes. So that's usually my bottom line is I got at least collect 60, you know, some odd cents for it. So uh, what about selling options with the BBW indicator has a negative slope? Um, what's the BBW indicator offhand? may call it something different or whatever, but Roger. So that I, I probably would stay away from that unless I saw a little bit of spike and I could get it. Or you know, sometimes I don't always go at mid price and I'll be like, you know what, if they're gonna come to me for my sixty three cents, I'll I'll put that trade in and you know and let it let it sit for a little while. So I put it in, you know, for a day trade. I'm not going to leave that in. Oh, the Bollinger Bands. Um, I do do Bollinger Bands a little bit, Roger. Uh, I generally go with the MACD, as you can see on most of my charts. I uh, I usually use the MACD, which is kind of like the Bollinger Bands, I guess, if you will. So, uh, do you say you don't trade options? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I I only really trade options. And so for for instance, what I'm going to be looking at for a max profit, I'm going to be looking to take 50% of my max profit. And if it happens in uh, two or three days, uh, then I'm going to take it off the table. So the sooner I can get out of the trade, the, the quicker. You know, even if it's like uh, if I get into a trade and in a day or two, I'm getting 30% of my max profit, then I'm going to pull that trade off. I'm just not going to take the risk all the way and try and 
take every penny out of it. Um, I'm going to take that trade off, reallocate those monies somewhere else, because there's always opportunities out there, you guys. So don't try and take every last nickel out of a trade. You know, uh, if you get 50% of max profit within, you know, 10 days, take it off. Move on. Don't, don't always just go to that 20 some odd days. That's a rule I go by. 50% of your max profit on these types of trades is all you really want. You know, if you get 25, 30% in a day or, or two days, take it off. You, you're going to always go back and look at it if you're at 45 days in a couple of days, and you might be able to get a better price for it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's not worth risking, you know, 20 cents for 20 more days in my eyes. So I look to do that, but and I'm also always looking to try and take that trade off at around uh, 20 days to expiration, if you will, because you're going to have another uh, month cycle, monthly cycle to start trading in. So look for that. 50% of your max profit, stick by that. Don't take any more risk. So CBS, you know, it looks pretty decent, but I would, like I said, I'd work that and try and get my 60 cents. Sometimes it'll happen. How big are your orders? You know, it depends. Uh, I start out small. I like to nickel and dime things in. Uh, I usually will go a little bit bigger than one, but I want to be able to show, like, uh, I should have showed that what your uh, risk was and stuff like that on that one. But I've got one that I want to throw up there that I, this was the one that I found that I think was, uh, the best candidate for this is Williams. So Williams came and bounced right off this fib level, the 61% fib level. It's pretty solid and it opened up today. It's rallying. It looked like, you know, it's going to close. You know, I would like it to close above this, the top of this bar, but as you can tell, it's got high IV. The earnings just came out. That's the earnings call. The earnings just came out. They, they, um, they beat, I don't think they beat, but they didn't beat. But, um, you can tell that the market's kind of slowed down on the sell-off. Looks like it's going to push higher. So this is something I would look at because you got the high ID. Looks like it's going to bottom out. W M E Williams. Carlos, it, it, you know, it doesn't really matter what size I'm trading. It really is up to your risk parameters. Um, you know, everybody's different. So uh, um, I don't, I don't trade hundreds or thousands usually, or ever. So uh, I usually will keep it between one and ten for the most part. But at the end of the day, don't do what I'm doing. You know, figure out what your risk is and work in the. Uh, the you guys that are new work in this uh, paper money because you can start feeling out your strategy, what you like to risk and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, just take with these strategies and play around with it, like what I'm doing. Go through it. WMB. Look at the IV percentiles, 93. So then you know when this IV percentile gets really high, you can see that your um, deltas, you know, now we're all of a sudden way out here on the deltas on that 34 strike, which is beautiful. Look how far away we are from the mid price. So that makes that a great candidate because, you know, when you have to trade right here close to at the money, you know, you've got a lot more risk than the further out you go. That's why you want the higher supply volatility. You get that contraction, you really see it suck out really quickly. Um, yeah, I'll look at it. Hold on. Uh, somebody's asking if I can do a put spread in the SPY weekly options. We can look at that. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the ones with seven days ago, right? Just confirm that if you would. So uh, I would look at this right here, right at the 30, 46. So, you know, the 46 is below here, so it have to be below that FIB level. And I would probably look at doing you know, the, the 43, so I would go a couple days out, maybe maybe the 45s, 44s, um, 
we'd have to see what we're going to get for that. So if we did the 46s, which I think is a great strike, so we're going to click on sell for that, and then you press down control if you want to go out. You can go to the vertical also, which just means you're doing a spread, and you can also do a couple of other things here. You can go out here and you go deep and wide, so you can go two strikes, three strikes, depending on your risk parameters, and go to vertical. Or if you do this, it opts to just do one. So, um, but I'm going to look at two. So click on that and it'll automatically give you your spread price. So $2, $2 wide, I, I would look to get at least, um, you know, so a third of the strike is 60 some odd cents. So that's pretty good right there, uh, right in there. How big are your normal targets? Uh, what do you mean by normal targets? Like percent of max profit, 50% max profit, I'm 99% of the time out of it. I, if it's really trending down, I will milk it for a little bit more. If I mean, doesn't look like I'm in any jeopardy, like the market's just, uh, uh, well, in this case, would be rallying, just really trending up. Um, then I will, I was thinking of a specific example where I sold a call spread and I just recently ran it out to about 75% of max profit just because it was completely just trending down. I think it was ABGO, but um, for the most part, 50% of max profit, I'm going to do that. So, uh, so for instance, this, let's just say is 70 cents, 35 cents, I'm out, especially, you know, in two or three days, if it's, you know, very close to 35 cents, uh, I'm going to be out and, and running. I'm just not going to take that risk on. So that's a pretty good candidate. Um, so this is one that I really like. So you can also go down here and change it if you don't want the, uh, although that messes that up. So I'm going to say let's delete this. Just do one because I'm going to assume that most people are going to be a little bit more risk adverse in the beginning of trading. So you just so 33 percent, 33 cents is what I'm looking for. You're getting a 36 cents. This is a, a good candidate as far as I'm concerned. And since it's getting beat up, I would, um, you know, I I would only do it like one lot at a time, or you know, depending on your risk parameter, and look at it again on Monday and see if you want to add to it. So uh, you can always average in on those as far as I'm concerned. You've got your defined risk, so it's still good. Delta, uh, still not sure on uh, acceptable levels for Delta on selling premium. Um, Vega, we got, I think you got Vega. Vega needs to at least be above 50% before you're going to be selling these. The Delta, I want it to be, on the one that I'm going to be selling, I want it to at least be right there, 34%, the 66% probability of success which is also correlated to standard deviation. And um, so uh, let's look at this on the, so we will look at the, I meant to analyze this real quick for you guys. So if you go in to click on this, you can go in and analyze the trade, and you can see your risk parameter on this. So because um, I'm collecting 36 cents, my max profit is only 36 cents or 36 dollars per one lot, uh, because everything's multiplied by 100 when you're doing options. And then, basically, my max loss is the difference between these two, the 46 and the 45, which is one dollar, and minus the 36 cent credit. So we're risking a dollar minus the 36 cent credit, which should give you uh, 64 cents. Right, so of course it goes back to, I don't know why it's not going to give me my standard deviation, uh, plus one, minus one, and it's not refreshing it. So one standard deviation is usually uh, uh, shown in this. I don't know why it's not doing it. Okay, so uh, Francis is asking, 
two to one. Did I? I don't understand what you're asking there. I'm looking. I'm looking to risk. Uh, you know, I'm looking to risk. Uh, yeah, two. I guess if you're looking at it as 66 versus one, which is 36. I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm risking two thirds to get a third. Really, is how it. It's not really two to one. It's kind of fifty fifty. So I'm I'm risking uh, two thirds to get one third. Does that make sense on your risk reward? Ultimately, or or I'm risking a uh, three quarters to get a quarter. So seventy-five cents to get a quarter, or sixty-six cents to get thirty-three cents, which is really you're risking two thirds versus a third. Is the way I I kind of look at it, I guess. I think that's all right. So that that trade I think is a really good one. Um, that fit everything perfectly, even the credit received for the most part, even though we haven't got filled. Up. You know, I I would play around with that, leave it in there for a little while. If I don't get hit, I'd move it down by a penny. And just uh, do a little bit of a price discovery, if you will. You guys have any other questions? For I think I pretty much covered everything really quickly. Um, so hopefully I didn't go too fast. So you know, always look for that 35 delta. 35 delta is basically a 66% probability of success, and with that you're also putting it out one standard deviation move which uh, happens more rarely um, oh right somebody asked about spy and then you know so you want that you want high volatility which is when you go down here and look at this above 50 we're always looking for and you want a liquid underline so um, this one is a little bit wider you know you got 25 cent wide it's not the six cent wide it's like uh, the apples and everything else, but um, you know it's it's still a, a highly traded product because you can kind of go in here and look at this and oops probability of success uh, where, where was it? what am I looking for oh I keep doing that ah sorry guys volume open interest so. You can see that there's a lot of trade going on in these contracts. So um, I don't know why it's not all updating, but you can see that there's, you know, five thousand in open interest. It's not trading a whole lot through here, but uh, it fit the bill, and pretty confident with that one. So SPY, let's do SPY. I trade SPY a lot. Also, uh, the one thing, the reason why I didn't really uh, all on here is uh, you know it's got really low volatility I do like this trade for like an iron condor or something like that if I was thinking to build an iron condor sometimes I will uh, throw some of those other things out the window it came up against this Fibonacci level I, I was considering this trade I think it's going to stay in here for the, you know for a few weeks so that is something I would look at if I were going to bend my rules but uh, for this, it's really not. There's not a whole lot there. Plus, I think I look at the options chain, and you're not going to be able to get very far away from the other monies. To um, I want to scroll. So the 35 delta. It's going to be really pretty close. 36. Um, let's just look at it. See what we could get for a spread in there. Just not going to get the the Vega contraction that that I would want. There we go. We got our Williams. Um, so you know you're going to get close to 33 cents. That it might not be a bad idea to to do something like that. You know you can get down here below this level. So if I was going to build an iron condor, which you know is what I was talking about, maybe we did an, an iron condor webinar, so you can go and check that out. This would be legging into one. Um, so, uh, 
that would be something I would look if I was going to build an iron condor, which is, you know, you're short a call spread and short a put spread. So you put the put spread on first and then do the call spread and it, you know, gets a little bit of a relief rally and, and settle into that. I like to uh, do puts into uh, weakness and sell calls into strength. I'm, I'm a bit of a counterintuitive that way because that's when the premiums on those get pumped up. Plus, I always feel like most investors have bad timing. Uh, as soon as people start panicking, that's usually when there's blood in the water, and when there's blood in the water, there's opportunity as far as I'm concerned. So uh, this would be something I would look at, though, for sure for doing a iron condor. I just wish that the ball was a little bit higher. We see a little bit more of a sell-off or a little bit more panic and pops down below here for a test or something. You're really going to see volatility expand. So um, uh, that, that could definitely be a good one. Uh, so what, 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 let's see. So I did the SPY. Uh, uh, yes, Roger asked, do you find it harder to find a good trade in low VIX environment like now? Yes, I do. I like when the VIX is higher. I, I'm not going to lie. I love it when the VIX is higher. It, it pumps up the premiums and everything. And if you can get the premiums pumped up, you have a better opportunity to to, to have success. So um, I love volatile markets. And as you can tell, this hasn't really been a volatile market for a very long time. You do get some here and there, but that's really when I'm putting on, and I allocate a lot more of my, my capital when those types of uh, environments are around. We just don't have that. Uh, this is uh, a daily chart right here. You know, I don't have it on the weekly, but that's on a daily. And I also only have it, you know, my fib from here. I, I didn't go all the way back to the very beginning on that. Does that answer your question? For a bear call spread, do we also? Yes, for a bear call spread, same thing, uh, like a 35% probability or 35 delta 50 percent uh, Vega and last Friday we did that exact uh, webinar so you can you know uh, check that out also and go to protraderstrategies.com so I think that's about all the questions I have for, from everybody right so basically you guys are going to get this sent to you via email uh, review it please and uh, go back over this again because you'll catch little nuances that you may have missed especially if you're some of the newer traders and uh, um, you know you can uh, also sign up for this we're having a for you guys that have watched this webinar so if you sign up you can get all of the older webinars we did one on poor man's covered calls if uh, as a stock replacement if you have a smaller account those poor man cover calls are great because you're not using a lot of margin. You know, if the, the underlying moves a dollar, you know, you're you're really only risking about 60, 80 cents for every one dollar the underlying moves. And then you can sell call options against that. And you're creating a covered call scenario where you're collecting premium on the stock you synthetically own. So you can do that. And you can also get the one that was on the call spreads. We did one on uh, iron condors, which is a probably the most popular trading strategy for options traders. Uh, we also are going to be working on one for the iron butterfly. I did do a uh, little uh, tutorial on the iron butterfly. But don't I don't go into as much detail on those as I do on the webinar. So uh, that's also a really good one. And uh, you know you also get the uh, those daily market commentaries I talked about, those videos that I kind of explain the history and go through, you know, where options started and the history all the way to today and and then go through what a call is, what a put is, and different option strategies on a brief view if you aren't very familiar with many of them. And you get all these webinars, so uh, check that out. Go to protraderstrategies.com. Like I said, I do daily market commentaries and, and talk about what I'm seeing in the markets and and what I'm playing, what I'm looking at. And you know, if you sign up, you get 
access to me. You know, if you have any questions, you want me to look at something that you guys are trading, and you want me to to just run it by my rules and and talk to you about it. I'm more than happy to do that too. So, um, and like later webinars, we're going to be drilling down on other things. Like I said, with an iron condor and just different variety of strategies that you can implement. Don't just pick one stock, one underlying, and and one strategy all the time. You know, keep it diversified. Keep your portfolio. Trade small and do a lot of different trades and that increases your probability of success. If you're putting all your money in one basket, you know, you, like they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread it out. Make sure that you are diversified. That way, you know, when one strategy doesn't work, you don't care because another one's working out real well. So if you have one that doesn't work and you have two that work, at least all your money wasn't in the one that doesn't work because you are going to have these things that don't work out for you. And that's just the nature of any type of trade. Not every trade is going to be a winner. And uh, like I said, check in the uh, little chat box there. There's a link to the Pro Trader Strategies thing that I showed you, and you can get that. I want to thank you guys all for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more webinars at, coming up. Like next Friday, we usually do these on Fridays right around this exact same time. So if you can get it. Uh, or if you can be here, it's great. I love all the back and forth commentary. You guys keep me on my toes. I appreciate that. And uh, the more the merrier. And if you can't make it, then you can get it sent to you. So that's great. I hope you guys all uh, learned a lot from this. And, you know, I like constructive criticism. So if, if you guys think that there's something I could be doing better, please feel free to reach out and say something because, uh, you know, even with trading, I think I can get better every day. And with these webinars, uh, I hope that I can teach you better every day. So uh, that's that's the goal. So I just want to make sure that you guys can take control of your portfolios and uh, start doing this on your own. Why pay somebody else to do it and, and, and collect all the fees when you can do it for a tenth as much as what they're charging you and do just as good of a job at the end of the day. Uh, that is for sure. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Robert. I appreciate it. Um, all right. Well, that's about all I got for you. You know, if, if you have any questions, you can contact us at 310-598-6677. You can email us at trading at protraderstrategies.com. And feel free to reach out to us and, uh, and with any of your questions. All right. That's about it for today, and I appreciate it. You guys have a great weekend. And if you can't take that, take it easy.